2021. Here we come. Welcome to the NTEB Prophecy News Podcast with your host and Bible teacher, Jeffrey Greider. Rightly divided, dispensationally correct, and standing on the authority of the King James Holy Bible. This program is brought to you by NowTheEndBegins.com. And good evening, everybody, and Happy New Year's 2021. I'm so glad that you're with us tonight here with the NTEB Global Family of Bible Believers. My name is Jeff Greider. I am the editor-in-chief of NowTheEndBegins.com, and tonight we are going to have some fun. We're going to look at prophecy. We're going to look at news. We're going to look at articles. We're going to play some great music. We're going to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to read from his book, the King James Authorized Version Holy Bible. And uh, we are going to see the type of year that we're just coming out of. And we're going to take a look at the type of year that we're getting ready to go into. It's going to be a wild, wild rocket ride. And uh, this is going to be a little bit of Bible teaching, a little bit of prophecy, a little bit of podcasting, a little bit of music, praise, testimony, prayer. Uh, we're just going to rip it up tonight. And we're going to have a good time in the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, as is our custom. And let's ask the Lord to bless our program today. Heavenly Father, we we thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for everything you provide, Lord. And uh, we thank you for the nearly 200 people that are in the chat room already. And it's filling up, Lord, and people around the world are tuning in, and we're glad and we're grateful, and we ask you to use us, Father God. Use us in a powerful way. And uh, Lord, last night we prayed for all the people that we know that have COVID, and we continue to pray for those people, and we lift them up to you, Lord, that you would give a full healing. We pray for Juanita who has a high blood pressure. She says it's 170 over 102. And we ask you to bring that down, Lord. And everybody who's tuning in tonight, Lord, who has uh, any sort of a health challenge or has a friend or a loved one in the hospital. And uh, Lord, we just thank you and praise you and ask you to work and move and heal in a mighty, mighty way. And uh, Father God, we commit this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Happy New Year's 2021, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I have been so excited for this program, and I've been thinking about it for quite a while, and we have had such a busy day here and yesterday at the NTEB studios in America's oldest city of St. Augustine, Florida. And let me just put a couple of pictures into the chat room. We have finally finished, and this is, I'm giving a praise report, uh, we have finally finished the uh, building of this new studio, a thousand square feet, and it's taken us six months, about six months and two weeks. But take a look at some of these pictures and uh, you tell me if it came out okay. You tell me if we did a good job. Uh, I am absolutely thrilled with the way it looks and it is really It is so big and it's so spacious and we have the room to do everything that we need to do and uh, we're getting ready. I'm so excited in 2021. Uh, We're finally going to join the video podcasters and everybody else who's been doing video for a long time, and we're late to the game, but we're getting to the game anyway, Uh, and we're getting ready. We have the whole front area where you see the couches and where you see the brick on the wall. Uh, That's where we're going to be doing the podcasting, and that's where we're going to be doing the video And I'm just, I'm excited. We're going to do um, short videos, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour. We're going to do longer videos. We're going to do Bible teaching. And it's just, this is what I've always dreamed about. I have talked about this for years and years and years. And isn't it crazy that in this year of 2020, that's the year that the Lord decided, okay, I'm going to dump it on you. And uh, this is how it's going to go. And so the studio, it's been so much work, so much work. You have no idea how much work, Um, but it's done. It's done. And we are ready to hit the ground running for 2021. And I'm so glad that we're doing this program tonight. Our very first ever 
Midnight Prophecy Program, our first New Year's Eve program. And tonight, I want to look at some of the stories, some of the really, really big stories that we talked about. And I want to look at uh, what's going to be coming in 2021. And uh, earlier today, I just went through the various news sites and I grabbed about 10 or 12 different headlines and I just want to read some of these stories to you in just a moment and so you can get a real flavor for the type of year that it is and for the direction that everything is going in. Uh, And Juanita says, um, I remember you talking about this studio years ago. It was all worth it. And yes, it it absolutely, the ups and downs, the ins and outs, the failures, the successes, uh, the mountains, the valleys, it's all been worth it. It's all been worth it. C.T. Studd said, only one life will soon be passed, but only what's done for Christ will last. And no matter how big this ministry gets, and um, God's been good this year, people. God's been very, very good to this ministry. Um, We are going to be finishing the year very, very strong. And for just the month of December, let me pull up the stats for just the month of December. And I just want to let you know how busy this ministry has been. So for just the month of December alone, we have had, uh, and I'm pulling it up right now, uh, survey says we have had for the month of December 1,218,429 visits and views in just the past five weeks. And for uh, the entire year of 2020, We are 16,710,133. So, man, a lot of people have been coming to the website. And, uh, you know, people ask me, well, what do you do with that money that people donate? We buy new hardware. We buy new software. Uh, about six months ago, we upgraded all of our equipment for the second time in, in, in the last five years. Because the more people that come and listen and be a part of it, and the more countries that come on board, and the millions and millions and millions of views, almost 17 million views and visits for 2020, that takes a lot of hardware with a lot of power, with a lot of backups, with a lot of security systems. And uh, so this stuff is expensive, absolutely. But that's kind of some of the things that we spend our money on. And I'm so glad that the Lord put on my heart to upgrade all of our hardware uh, about six months ago, because boy, did we really need it. And um, uh, we have had a 99 point nine percent uptime and uh so so i just i'm excited and i just praise the lord and i'm so glad that all of you are here with us tonight and we're going to go right up till midnight and uh, we're going to have a good time in the lord jesus christ now we stand on the precipice of historic times Absolutely historic times. Let me just read for you a couple of lines from what's going to be my first article of 2021. And that's the article that I typically post at the strike of midnight. And as soon as it gets into that next year, I click the publish button. And I that's how I do my first article of the year. And um, last year at the stroke of midnight... I um, I wrote an article that was really a lot more sentimental and introspective than I thought it would be, but sometimes an article just goes where it wants to go. And this time last year, I was talking about how the Lord was, he was just tugging at me and telling me that it was time for me to commit to the ministry of Now the End Begins full time and to jump in with both feet. And I thought to myself, well, if I do that, If my main job becomes now the end begins, how do I pay my bills? Um, How do I live my life? And I just, I just was so unsure. Could I really do this full time? And I prayed about it and I prayed about it. And God said, I need you to trust me on this. And I, I want you to commit to this ministry on a full time basis. 
and I prayed about it, and New Year's Eve of last year, one year ago tonight, I bowed my head in front of the computer screen, I laid my hands on the website, and I said, Father God, I commit myself to this full time. And I had no idea that in 10 weeks, we would be in the midst of a global lockdown. I knew that 2020 was going to be a crazy year, but I nobody knew just how crazy it was going to be. And by the time everything hit around March 15th, March 18th of 2020, God had me on the front times of the of the front lines of the end times full time. And uh, I can, it's, it's just his timing is so perfect. And he's allowed us every step of the way to bring you all of the breaking news and everything that relates to Bible prophecy. And as this year has gotten crazier and crazier, do, do you realize that the gospel of the grace of God coming out from us from now the end begins from all of us, not just me, but we are one big global family of Bible believers. And everybody who attends these programs and reads the articles and then shares that with other people. I was talking with a woman named Luciana tonight and her and her, her daughter, they live locally and they wanted to stop by and see the studios and meet me. And we were talking and she was telling me that in Brazil, there's a Bible teacher in Brazil who goes to Now the End Begins, grabs our articles, translates that into Portuguese, and teaches it, teaches what we publish to tens of thousands of people in the nation of, of Brazil. And he translates the whole thing into Portuguese. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that absolutely incredible how God is using all of us, all of us, in... um in this incredible end times of 2020. So yes, the end times are here and things are heating up and things are getting crazy. But I want you to really focus on the fact that in the midst of all this craziness, God is allowing us to stand on the old fashioned King James Bible to walk in the old ways and seek and look and ask for the old paths and we are proclaiming the gospel of the grace of God as the world literally turns to hell. And all of us have a hand in this. And it is just absolutely so exciting to me. Um, C.T. Studd said, only one life will soon be passed and only what's done for Christ will last. Now, we are living in the end times, make no doubt about that. Uh, we are living in the time that the Bible said was going to be a crazy, crazy, crazy period of time. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and they shall be turned onto fables. And then he says uh, in chapter three, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, and covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And these are the times that we find ourselves in, and it is absolutely incredible. It is exciting. And I want you guys to be excited as well. Not that these crazy things are happening because it's a really, really weird time. And uh, COVID is doing so much damage and people are getting sick. We had a whole COVID 
prayer time last night. People are dying of COVID, and it's absolutely crazy. Uh, but God said in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5, the verse that I, I really want all of you guys to commit to memory for this year coming up, because this verse, Habakkuk 1.5, is going to be, we are attaching this verse to 2021, because we know what's coming. Habakkuk 1.5, Behold ye among the heathen in regard, and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe though it be told you. And that work that Habakkuk is talking about is the prophetic end times work of, uh, of God. And in Isaiah chapter 28, Isaiah talks about this same end times thing that you're going to see it, but you're not going to believe it. And uh, Isaiah says that this is God doing something very, very strange. Isaiah 28, 21. For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perizim. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. Now, therefore, be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption, even determined upon the whole earth, Give ye ear and hear my voice, hearken and hear my speech. Isaiah is saying that in the end times, God is going to do what the world is going to think of as strange work, and he's going to bring to pass his strange act. God knows exactly what lost people think. God knows what goes through their head, and God knows that lost people look at what's happening, and it looks like a very, very strange thing. That's why he has his prophets talking in clear, simple language that the average person, saved or lost, can understand. God, the Bible says in Isaiah 55, about the nature of God. Um, in Isaiah 55, we read this. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and let the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And uh, God has already declared what's going to take place. God has already said within the scripture of truth what's going to be happening. And we are living in an absolutely crazy time. Ronald Reagan talked about this 40 years ago. Ronald Reagan talked about the day where if the, 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 the American patriot stood down and allowed the powers of evil to take over, Ronald Reagan said that's when America would fall. Now let's set the record straight. There's no argument over the choice between peace and war, but there's only one guaranteed way you can have peace, and you can have it in the next second. Surrender. Admittedly, there's a risk in any course we follow other than this, but every lesson of history tells us that the greater risk lies in appeasement. And this is the specter our well-meaning liberal friends refuse to face, that their policy of accommodation is appeasement. And it gives no choice between peace and war, only between fight or surrender. If we continue to accommodate, continue to back and retreat, eventually we have to face the final demand, the ultimatum. And what then? When Nikita Khrushchev has told his people, he knows what our answer will be. He has told them, that we're retreating under the pressure of the Cold War, and someday, when the time comes to deliver the final ultimatum, our surrender will be voluntary, because by that time, we will have been weakened from within spiritually, morally, and economically. He believes this because from our side, he's heard voices pleading for peace at any price, or better rest than death, or as one commentator put it, he'd rather live on his knees than die on his feet. And therein lies the road to war, because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. You and I know 
and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. If nothing in life is worth dying for, when did this begin? Just in the face of this enemy? Or should Moses have told the children of Israel to live in slavery under the pharaohs? Should Christ have refused the cross? Should the patriots at Concord Bridge have thrown down their guns and refused to fire the shot heard around the world? The martyrs of history were not fools. And our honored dead who gave their lives to stop the advance of the Nazis didn't die in vain. Where then is the road to peace? Well, it's a simple answer after all. You and I have the courage to say to our enemies, there is a price we will not pay, there is a point beyond which they must not advance. Winston Churchill said the destiny of man is not measured by material computations. When great forces around the move in the world, we learn we're spirits, not animals. He said there's something going on in time and space and beyond time and space, which, whether we like it or not, spells duty. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness. George Washington, in his address to the Continental Army before the Battle of Long Island, Tuesday, August 27, 1776. The time is now near at hand which must probably determine whether Americans are to be free men or slaves whether they are to have any property they can call their own, whether their houses and farms are to be pillaged and destroyed and themselves consigned to a state of wretchedness from which no human efforts can deliver them. The fate of unborn millions will now depend under God on the courage and the conduct of this army. Our cruel and unrelenting enemies leaves us only the choice of brave resistance or the most abject submission. We have, therefore, to resolve to conquer or die. That's what George Washington said in the address to the Continental Army right before the Battle of Long Island on August 27th of 1776. And those are powerful words. Uh, that clip that I played for you from President Reagan, that clip is called The Last Best Hope of Man on Earth. Now, we know, we know as Bible believers that the last best hope of man on earth is Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Titus 2.13 that we're to be looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest unto your souls. Uh, Jesus Christ is our Sabbath rest. Jesus Christ is the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Jesus Christ is, he is the resurrection. Remember what he, when he was talking with Martha and, um, he asked Martha if she believed that her brother would rise again. And Martha said, Yea, Lord, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus drops a bomb on her. He looks her right in the eyes and he says, Martha, I am the resurrection. Man, I read that and I just get chills. The hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Jesus Christ is not going to resurrect us as an action. He is, he is the resurrection and it is his very appearance that makes us rise from the dead because he lives. We live, uh, buried with him in baptism and risen again in newness of life. When I got baptized 30 years ago, that's what the pastor said to me when he, it was in a backyard swimming pool. And when he brought me up out of the water, uh, buried with him in baptism and risen again in newness of life. And that's the position. That's the position where we are right now. And, um, uh, Ronald Reagan had it right. George Washington had it right. But guess what? We dropped the ball in 2020. Uh, all year long, I kept waiting for patriots to rise up. And they, and they rose up a little bit. There was a couple of rallies. But the patriots didn't march in the streets the way Black Lives Matter did. 
the way Antifa did, the way the Sunrise Movement did, the way that George Soros and his billions of dollars and the army that he's created, uh, it's absolutely off the charts, the things that are happening. They stole the election. It's the perfect crime. They did it in broad daylight. And uh, it's kind of looking like it's not possible to stop them. And everybody is looking at January 6th and what's going to happen. But I don't, I don't have such a good feeling about January 6th. If you do, that's great. But I don't uh, because it looks, it looks pretty bleak. So let me read just a small smattering of the headlines today. And uh, earlier this afternoon, I just did a random sampling of headlines. And I think that you'll find this very interesting. This one is a woman was arrested in England because she went into a hospital. You know how all the hospitals... They're all saying that they're, that they're overflowing and they're crowded and all this stuff. And the COVID patients are, they're lining the hallways and they have to have uh, moving vans with refrigerated uh, uh, cars for all the dead bodies. Well, this woman in England, she went into her local hospital and what did she find? Um, she found just a regular hospital. It says here, the 46-year-old woman has been bailed out until January on the condition that she does not enter any NHS hospital except for a health emergency or an appointment. In the video, which was posted on social media, the woman, as she walked through the uh, hospital with a video camera, she said, where's the second wave? Where are all the people dying from the second wave as she wanders through the largely deserted corridors of the hospital? And then she says, we've now this is happening in England. And she says, we've just been locked down in Gloucester into tier three for this, for an empty hospital. She said, this is a disgrace. And um, they arrested her. And they put her in jail. They arrested that woman and put her in jail. And her only crime was walking through a hospital and taking a video. And I've heard reports even from California where they're supposed to be having an unprecedented wave of deaths. And I'm hearing from, from healthcare workers in California and they're, and they're telling me that it's just not true. Now, maybe you know of a different story where you live, and if you do, please post that in the chat room. If you're listening to this program and you want to be a part of the chat room uh, and you don't know how to find the chat room, just go to ntebradio.com, ntebradio.com, and it will bring you right to the chat room. Uh, Here's another article. Over 4,100 people were shot in Mayor Lightfoot's Chicago in the year 2020. The Chicago Tribune reports the exact figure of 4,115 shooting victims, a total that represents fatal and non-fatal shootings combined. The Tribune isolates homicides in a separate body of data, noting that there were 768 homicides in Chicago between January 1st and December 27th of 2020. This is up considerably over 2019, uh, a year which the Chicago Police Department noted 491 homicides in the city. Now, It's important to understand that Chicago is one of those places that is run by Democrats. You have a Democrat mayor, you have a Democrat governor, all the people on the town council. It's Democrats everywhere that you look. And do you know what happens when you look at Democrat run cities? That's where all the crime is. All the crime is in Democrat run cities. Uh, I live in Florida. And yes, we have crime here, absolutely. Um, but we don't have an unprecedented amount of murders. Uh, 
We don't have almost a 100% rise in the homicide rate between this year and last year. But that's exactly what you find when you look at cities and towns and states that are run by Democrats. They're in really, really, really bad shape. How about this article? Patricia Arquette, she's a Hollywood actress, compares refusal to wear masks to having her period without wearing pants. This is an interesting take. Oscar-winning Hollywood star Patricia Arquette has compared the refusal to wear masks in a grocery store to having her, quote, free-flow period, end quote, without wearing pants. So uh, this is what's happening now. Uh, People who choose not to wear a mask are starting to be vilified and they are starting to be threatened. And uh, you're going to see, one of the things that you're going to see in 2021 after Joe Biden becomes president, the first hundred days, Joe Biden is going to make it a federal mandate that everybody in America, if you want to go to a grocery store or a gas station, um, if you're going to be riding in your car, he's going to have police pulling you over. It's going to be absolutely brutal. And so in 2021, here's my first prediction for 2021. We are going to see the elements of the coming police state We are going to see those things right in front of our face, and it's going to happen within the first hundred days of Joe Biden's presidency. And when I say police state, the mayors and the governors and the federal government is going to order people to wear masks on a federal level. And if you don't do it, remember when cell phones started getting popular and, uh, Um, If you would drive past a police officer and you were talking on the phone, a lot of the times that cop would pull you over. They still do that in places like New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, uh, California, Oregon, Washington. Um, They don't do that here in Florida, but they still do that in a lot of the liberal states. But do you remember what it was like and how they harassed you for simply talking on the phone while you were driving? Um, Dr. Shirley says aggressive checkpoints coming in 2021. That's exactly right. Dr. Shirley, aggressive checkpoints. You're going to see people getting pulled over driving in their own car with the windows up and they're going to get pulled over and they're going to get a ticket because they're not wearing a mask while they're driving. So that's our first prediction for 2021. That's the type of things that we're going to see coming. Now, how do I know that? There's a left-wing journalist by the name of Kurt Eichenwald. And on his Twitter feed, when he has 506,000 Twitter followers, so Kurt Eichenwald, who is a liberal journalist, he has over half a million followers on Twitter. He had a rant the other night going off against anti-maskers. So, Write that down. That's the new phrase that the liberal left is using. If you refuse to wear a mask or you don't want to wear a mask, uh, they're going to label you as an anti-masker. So this is what he said. He said, I have so much hate in my heart tonight. My sister, widowed by COVID, um has COVID because of anti-maskers. He said 4,000 people died in America today. The GOP says nothing. He says, I wish them and their loved ones all the pain and misery that they inflicted on this country. Then he goes on to say, it's at a moment like this that I want to find an anti-masker. And listen to what he says now. I want to find an anti-masker and I want to beat them to death. Let that sink in for just a moment. Kurt Eichenwald, and he's a journalist, 
he says he wants to find anti-maskers and he wants to literally beat them to death. Why? What's his justification? He says, since they believe that they have the right to kill other people, they have surrendered any right to object. So this is how it's going to go. The liberal left, who is about to take the presidency, they have the Congress, and depending on how it goes in Georgia on Tuesday, they're either going to get the Senate or not get the Senate. Now, listen to me for a moment. If you live in the great state of Georgia, you need to vote Republican like your life depends upon it. Now, I understand that this world is not our home and we're just passing through and we're marching on to Zion. I get all that. I believe all that. I preach that. I teach that. I'm right with you on that. You also have to remember that at the same time, until we are taken to the new Jerusalem, until the rapture happens, we have to live in this country. Now, do you want to live under tyranny? Or do you want to live in relative peace where they leave you alone for the most part? If you live in Georgia, you absolutely have to vote Republican. You got to vote for Kelly Loeffler and whoever that other guy is. Uh, If you live in Georgia and you haven't voted, you need to vote Republican uh, like your life depends upon it. Because if they get the Senate, and they already have the Congress, and then they have the White House, it is going to be a literal hell on earth. So, um, again, if you live in Georgia, if you live in Georgia, and, and if you haven't voted, you need to vote Republican. You need to vote for Kelly Loeffler. Um, what else is going on here? Oh, here's an interesting article. Ray Kinzinger says that the Republican base is starting to turn on Donald Trump. And that is absolutely true. And we've been seeing that for a couple of weeks now. One of the reasons why I really feel in my heart of hearts why Donald Trump is not going to be successful on January 6th or January 20th is because the Republican base has turned against him. Uh, and this what this is what um, uh, Representative Adam Kins- Kinzinger, uh, he's a Republican from Illinois, he said on Wednesday. He said, "I think we have to step back and understand. You know, people that feel very disaffected. Donald Trump spoke to them, but here is the problem: up to the election, it's an election. It's just a competition of ideas. But after." An election, it has turned into an undermining of democracy. So he goes on to say that he doesn't believe that Donald Trump has a case. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I believe with all my heart that the liberal left absolutely stole this election. We told you about the Transition Integrity Project, about uh, George Soros and all those people and uh, the Open Border Society and, and everybody else that has worked to rig this election. But the one thing that uh, Trump's team have, have not done, they haven't produced the proof. And that's a fatal mistake. That's a fatal error. Um, You may be able to win an election by tweeting, but you're never going to win a court case through Twitter. And it is it's sad to me, but um, I still haven't seen the proof that the Democrats stole the election, even though I absolutely one thousand one thousand percent believe that that's what the Democrats did. They stole the election. But it's it's really starting to look more and more like the perfect crime. And it looks like they are on the edge of getting away with it. Now, uh, here's an article talking about a new frontier is opening up in the search for extraterrestrial life. 
On December 18th, the world learned that the um, learned that Breakthrough Listen, a privately funded search for extraterrestrial intelligence, has found its first official candidate signal. The signal's existence lit up the the internet. Um, was BLC-1, as it's called, finally our moment of contact? Breakthrough, listen, scientists, now hard at work on a paper about their findings, were quick to explain that no, but they're definitely on to something. And so there's this group called Breakthrough Listen. And what they're doing is they are scanning outer space. And what they're looking for is they are looking for any signs of extraterrestrial Extrial, extraterrestrial life. And uh, they are finding some things that they are working on decoding and figuring out and really listening to what that is. But 2020 is a year that is going to go down in the history books as the year that the United States Pentagon finally admitted, finally admitted that... Um, we have been in touch and in contact with extraterrestrials, with all sorts of spacecraft, with all sorts of things like that. And they are finally admitting that. Now, we told you a couple of weeks ago about this retired general in Israel called um, Hayam Eshed. And we told you that um, he said that he has proof that Israel and the United States, Netanyahu and, and uh, Trump, have been in communication with extraterrestrials. And he said, you can believe me or not believe me. It doesn't really make any difference at all. Uh, he says, I know that these things exist and these things are ac absolutely happening. And so one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that 2020 was the year, finally, when everybody admitted that we are in contact with aliens, as they call them. We know that it's the Genesis 6 giants. Um, take a listen to this from Jason A., the Earth is under a weather watch tonight, a space weather watch. Yeah, Fox News' Rocky Madden joins us now from Forest Park to show us why this is so important. Also in New Jersey, mystery booms. Residents and police in one community want to know what and who are behind a series of extremely loud noises that sound like explosions. And they've been rattling a lot of people in town for weeks now. Good morning, guys. Uh, I got some trending news this morning, and we're starting with this story that was in the Jerusalem Post that is now being picked up and broadcast all over the place. It's been trending on Twitter since it was posted, and uh, we'll just get into it here. The story quotes the former head of Israel's space program. That's according to Israel's former space security chief. In an interview with an Israeli newspaper, he said the aliens have been waiting until today for humanity to develop and reach a stage where we will understand in general what space and spaceships are. Meet Haim Eshet. Reports claim he was once the head of Israel's space security program. The man recently gave an interview to an Israeli newspaper. What he said was out of the world, quite literally. He said aliens not only exist, but have also made contact with humanity. That should be great news. Well, this is quite a story, and it comes from the man who headed Israel's space security program for nearly 30 years. Chaim Eshed is making the extraordinary claim that the United States and Israel have been in contact with a group of aliens for years, not immigrants, but extraterrestrials. Listen up, all you believers. Two classified Pentagon reports on UFOs have been revealed, including a newly leaked photo. Here it is, showing what the pilot described as a silver object found hovering above the Atlantic Ocean. And if you zoom in, it appears to be some sort of triangular object. The report reportedly could not rule out alien or non-human technology. Now, here's where it gets really weird. There is some speculation that some UFOs are able to move through the air and 
underwater. What? The possibility that aliens are operating beneath the ocean. You know what they say, Jeff, that we know more about the moon in outer space than we know about our own ocean. All right, before we jump into Earth's forecast, let's stay on the subject of space because... So we're going to stop it right there for a moment. Stacy in the chat room, she was asking, she had a great question. She said, what do space aliens have to do with the Bible? And that's a really, really good question. So let me start with this. Let me start with this. In Matthew 24, verses 37 through 39, Jesus said this. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So Stacy, Jesus Christ says, that the time of Jacob's trouble that takes place after the rapture of the church, and we talked about that on our Wednesday night Bible study last night. So if you haven't heard that Bible study, you really need to go take a listen to last night's Bible study. We, it was a huge, huge study on the end times prophecy timeline. So please, if you haven't heard last night's Bible study, when this program is over, please go back and listen to it, and I promise you that it will be a blessing. But suffice to say that Jesus himself says that the time of Jacob's trouble and the great tribulation is going to be like it was in the days of Noah. Now, in the days of Noah, God destroyed the entire earth with a flood because fallen angels came down to earth and they had sex with human women and they produced a race of giants called Rephium. Uh, the fallen angels are called ne Nephilim. But the babies that they produce, the fallen angel babies, are actually called the Rephium. And turn to Genesis chapter 6 for a moment, and let's just read the first um, uh, seven verses. Genesis 6, 1 through 7. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took of them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is also flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things and the fowl of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, um, we have a question from, hold on, the chat room is getting out of my control here. Cheryl H. says, how were the angels able to do that when in heaven the angels do not and cannot reproduce? Um, uh, the Bible does not say that angels are incapable of reproducing. Um, the Bible says that, that, uh, that they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but that doesn't mean that they're not capable of reproduction. Do you remember when the angels came down to Lot, uh, in Sodom? And do you remember what the, the, the LGBTQ plus population said when they saw the angels? Turn to Genesis chapter 19. 
Turn to Genesis chapter 19, and I want to show you something uh, very important about angels, okay? Uh, now, there there is no mention in the Bible of female angels. If they exist, the Bible, for whatever reason, does not mention them. Every place in the Bible that you see an angel being mentioned, two thing, three things um, stand out. All the appearances of angels in the Bible are male. They all look like men. And they don't have any wings. So the idea that angels fly around with wings is not a biblical idea. And I'll show it to you. Uh, Genesis 19, and let's just read a couple of the verses from Genesis 19. Genesis 19, starting in 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. So two angels in Genesis 19 come to visit Lot. And when Lot's talking to them, he is treating them just like any other two men that he would talk to. He invites them to stay at his house. He invites them to sleep in his guest room. And he invites them to wash their feet. So when Lot is looking at these two angels, what is he seeing? He is simply seeing two beings that look just like two men. But... Let's start reading in verse 3 of Genesis 19. And he pressed them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and they entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake on leavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the LGBTQ men of the city, even the men of Sodom, can pass the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, and in verse 5 it says, And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out that we may know them. So um, the men of the city surrounded Lot's house, and they are demanding that Lot release the two angels because they want to have sex with them. Uh, and verse 6 says, And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. And then, of course, you know that the angels, uh, they smote the men with blindness, and they were not able to find the door. They couldn't find the angels. Um, and that's what, and then the angels got Lot and his family out because God was going to destroy the city. But I want you to notice that when angels appear in the Bible, they appear as men. They don't have any wings. They have hands and feet, and they look just like men. Now, they were probably taller. They were probably larger. Um, they were probably very imposing men. But every place in the Bible where it talks about angels, uh, they are all men. There are never any female angels that are mentioned, and they are never seen wearing wings. Uh, it is the seraphim and the cherubim that have the wings. Angels don't have wings. Now, so Stacy, I hope that that answered your, your uh, question. So, on April 28th of 2020, the United States Pentagon admitted that videos of UFOs which were taken by the Air Force pilots are legitimate and that real encounters with aliens actually took place. So, on April 28th of 2020, the United States Pentagon admitted that Air Force pilots, Navy Air Force pilots, the videos that they were taken are 
real and the encounters actually happened. And so very quietly and very subtly, without a lot of fanfare, 2020 was the year that the United States government admitted multiple times on three separate occasions the U.S. government, the United States Pentagon, admitted on three separate occasions that they have been in touch and in contact with aliens for years now. Then it got a little crazier. On July 25th of 2020, um, the Pentagon formed a group called the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force, And that group says that in the last couple of years, they have found and recovered, quote, objects and vehicles not made on this earth. And that's coming from a group inside um, the Defense Intelligence Agency. And they call themselves the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force. And they have said on the record that they have recovered objects and vehicles. Man, I'd like to know what type of vehicle that is. Is it a space vehicle? Is it a water vehicle? Is it, uh, is it a car of some kind? Is it a truck? Uh, they don't say, does it fly? Does it swim? What does it do? But the Pentagon says that they have recovered objects and vehicles that were not made on the earth. And the really interesting thing about all of this, the fascinating thing about all of it, is that when they made these admissions, nobody really questioned them. Nobody really bat an eye. You know, after years and years of denying that space aliens exist, when they finally admitted in this year, 2020, that yes, space aliens absolutely exist. It's everyone just took it. Nobody freaked out. Nobody had a problem. It made the news for one news cycle, maybe two news cycles. You hear these guys talking about it. North Carolina has a long shot the next two nights to see some auroras. And it started earlier this week when a giant solar flare or a coronal mass ejection came from the sun headed for our planet. But it appears for the next few years, the sun is going to be making lots of news. Excited because it's a, it's been a, it's been a quiet, a long, quiet time the last three to four years. Scientists watched as a solar flare exploded from the sun just two days ago. They believe we can now expect geomagnetic storms from the sun in the future, and they should peak in 2025. Experts say all that solar activity has the potential of causing voltage irregularities, even blackouts for power companies like happened in 1989 in Canada. Well, we turn now to a new book that explores what scientists call the sixth extinction, the massive dying off of animal and plant life that is happening today. Up to 50% of all living species are in danger of disappearing by the end of the century. So what we see happening is we see tremendous changes that are taking place now in our atmosphere, in our solar system, in outer space. Um, Aliens are showing up. Objects are showing up. Vehicles are showing up. Air Force and Navy pilots are capturing these encounters on a regular basis. And nobody's batting an eye. Nobody's saying much of anything. And these stories, 10 years ago, these stories would have been absolutely mind-blowing. These stories, 10 years ago, would have absolutely rocked the world. And now in 2020, because there is so much crazy stuff happening, 
these things, these stories are being released. Pentagon is admitting to all this stuff and nobody really cares. And the timing is absolutely perfect. And this is what they wait for. And um, for decades now, uh, we have watched predictive programming. A very chilling example of predictive programming is found in a movie that was released to streaming networks on December 11th called Songbird. And this is a predictive programming movie that was made, I guess, it was made really quick. But as I was telling you the other day, I used to work in Hollywood. It's hard to make good movies very quickly. So I want you to listen to the trailer of this movie, Songbird, and um, see if it reminds you of anything. This movie, Songbird, was released December 11th, just 20 days ago. Take a listen to this new movie. Good morning, Miss Garcia. Good morning, sunshine. I miss you. I could kiss you right now. Yeah, well, someday. Curfew is now in effect. All unauthorized citizens must stay indoors. Bring it on. Tensions rise as we enter the 213th week of lockdown. A grim new reality emerges. COVID-23 has mutated. Beginning thermal scan. Thermal scan normal. A horrifying new development new today. New data confirms the virus attacks the brain tissue. Hey, whoa, 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 I'm immune! I'm immune! Don't worry. Worldwide death toll rises to over 110 million. All infected Americans are being forced into quarantine camps. Sarah. Sarah, what's going on? Department of Sanitation. Sarah, talk to me. I think my neighbor has a fever. It'll be so much easier if you just open the door. Mrs. Grant, you have visitors. Sarah, please. Sarah, open that door. Sarah. Sarah, do not open that door. person left in my life that matters to me i can't help you what you're talking about is illegal That was the official movie trailer from Songbird, and I guess that's what qualifies or passes for a date movie in 2020. Uh, But that's what's coming. When you heard that clip talk about lockdown and, um, you know, I've already had the virus and I've, I've already have the scan and the passport, we told you over six months ago, we told you to prepare yourself for the ID2020 COVID-19 immunity passport that is going to combine digital identity with vaccinations, blockchain, and nanotechnology. So here's another one of the predictions that we made early on in this year of 2020. We told you to prepare for something called an immunity passport. And at the time that we talked about it, 
Uh, I got a lot of emails after we started writing about the immunity passport. And people would write to me and they would say, I've never heard of that. What is an immunity passport? Now, of course, everybody knows about it. Uh, but this was one of the predictions that we made months ago in the early days of 2020. And we told you that immunity passports were coming. Listen to this posted on a Bill Gates funded website for it's called Gavi, G-A-V-I dot org. Uh, Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance. And the name of this article is called What Do Immunity Passports and Vaccination Certificates Mean for COVID-19 Restrictions? So this article that I'm just going to give you a snippet of is from a Bill Gates funded website. Bill Gates created the group called Gavi, G-A-V-I, which is the Vaccine Alliance. And he spent tens of millions of dollars to put this group together. And then after it was together, he hooked it up with the World Health Organization. So this is what they wrote just two weeks ago. An immunity passport is an official document that certifies an individual has been infected and is purportedly immune to SARS-CoV-2. In principle, this can then give an individual more freedom to travel and socialize, allowing people to enter a country if they can provide evidence that they have already recovered from COVID-19. So this is from the Gavi Vaccine Alliance funded by Bill Gates in an article that they wrote on December 11th. So, uh, we told you six, seven months ago that something called an immunity passport was in the works and it was coming. And now the immunity passport is almost here. The only question is, is um, uh, how exactly are they going to work it out? That's the only question that they have right now. Uh, is it going to be digital, which they're all agreeing that, yes, it's going to be digital. And uh, how is that going to work? Well, the United Nations has decided to get a jump on things. And the United Nations is right now um, rolling out a digital wallet. And in this digital wallet, uh, it's going to track every move that you make. Now, if you had to guess how many people work in all the different United Nations groups, how many people do you think uh, work for the United Nations? 35,000 people work for the United Nations. And they have been working all year long on a digital wallet. And that digital wallet is going to track people every single step of the way. Take a listen to what Spiro reported about three or four weeks ago. And uh, he had a great video about the United Nations announcing a biometric digital ID wallet. And in this clip, you are going to hear the commercial that was produced by the United Nations talking about the biometric digital identification that they are giving to every single one of their 35,000 plus employees. Take a listen to this clip from our friend Spiro. Welcome everyone, I'm Spiro, thanks for tuning in. There's a lot going on and a lot to cover, but in this report I'd like to specifically focus on one of the major changes coming our way as we transition into the Great Reset and the new digitalized system of control, and that is digital IDs. A topic we have covered here on the show previously, uh, I'll leave links for uh, some in-depth reports on that uh, regarding the UN's work with the Gates Foundation and ID2020, among many others, to establish a digital identity and birth registration for everyone on the planet under Sustainable Development Goal 16.9, which is part of the UN's 2030 agenda. But for now... Uh, I want to focus on this news that just came out here uh, within the past couple of days. The International Civil Aviation Organization, which is a specialized agency under the United Nations, has announced they are one step closer to bringing digital identity-based travel to a reality, as they have endorsed specifications for the first digital travel credentials. Now, additionally, the United Nations just announced that they are rolling out its own biometric digital identity wallet, 
As you can see here on Biometric Update, the UN Digital Solutions Center is a pilot project for the World Food Program, which is a United Nations program, and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and the United Nations International Computing Center, which I have reported on previously, that was very instrumental in the development uh, and implementation and rollout of 5G almost a decade ago. Uh, so. This particular UN Biometric Digital Wallet is intended for UN employees, and it can be used for uh, data related to human resources, medical status, i.e. You know, vaccine status, travel, there's your health passport, payroll, and pensions. It's going to be hooked up to your financials. Now, this uh, can also be used for onboarding new employees or helping transition those who are leaving or retiring away from the organization. Now, here is a quick promo video. Digital transformation is changing the way we manage our data, our information, our interactions, and our identities online. The United Nations is ready to digitally transform how it deals with identity, with a system to streamline information sharing, daily workflows, access to platforms and buildings, operating across agencies by providing its personnel with a universal system-wide identity solution. Introducing the UN Digital ID. A unique and digital identity for UN personnel from the day you join to the day you part. All of your personal, HR, medical, travel, security, payroll and pension data in the palm of your hand, giving you full control on what you share and with whom. With blockchain and biometrics, the UN Digital ID makes verification efficient, secure, transparent, immutable, portable and universal. It's been piloted by different agencies and the UN Pension Fund, where they've replaced current manual processes with certainty for who and where pension recipients say they are at any given time. Imagine a regional field office has just joined the UN. She uses the mobile app to obtain a digital wallet, stored securely in her smartphone and only accessible to her with biometrics. Even better than a physical wallet, she can store all her credentials issued by any UN organization in her digital wallet. She has immediate access to course certificates, travel clearances from UNDSS, medical records from allergies to vaccinations, also making any transfer to another organization a breeze. As innovation transforms the world, we can improve the way we manage our identities online. UN Digital IDs, a building block for digital cooperation, unlocking the promise of the SDGs. Gene in the chat room made the comment, that sure sounds like a happy ad. And that music was upbeat and light and peppy. And behind that music and behind the smooth-talking Australian woman's voice, what do you have? You have a system that is um, rapidly turning towards uh, what the Bible calls the mark of the beast. And that's exactly what's being developed right now, is the mark of the beast system. Now, we told you uh, just three days ago on December 28th, we told you as Spain creates a registry for, quote, vaccine refusers, end quote, the immunity passport is right around the corner and will soon be mandated to reopen the economy. With the authorization of a second effective vaccine against the coronavirus, we can now imagine an end to the pandemic, like voyagers on a ship seeing the safety of shore. But it will take many months, the article said, before we reach the end of this perilous journey. And the public is increasingly losing patience with board restrictions uh, on day-to-day -day life. So, as more and more people are being vaccinated, it's time to carefully design the system of immunity passports. Well, Silicon Valley has been working fever, feverishly on uh, immunity passports. Bill Gates started a company in 2019 that we were one of the very first groups uh, to tell you about this, and we didn't tell you about it in 2020. We actually told you about this particular group um, in 2019 and we were one of the very very first websites to put all the pieces together and to tell you about this company called id 2020 and id 2020 was created by microsoft when bill gates was still with microsoft and they spent tens of millions of dollars to put together this group whose only purpose and whose stated mission 
is to give every human being on the face of the earth an implantable biometric digital identification. And Bill Gates said that the best way to do that is to combine biometrics as in a digital identification with vaccines. And that's what Bill Gates has been pushing the entire time. So one of the things that we predicted early on in 2020 is we predicted that Bill Gates was going to develop a series of vaccines, which he has. Every single vaccine that's coming out now, whether it comes out from Pfizer-BioNTech or whether it comes from Moderna or AstraZeneca, all of these companies are companies that have taken tens of millions of dollars apiece from Bill Gates. And Bill Gates, his overarching plan is not simply to have a vaccine. Bill Gates' overarching plan is to have a vaccine that is tied to digital identification and tied to um, uh, biometrics. And this is what his plan is has always been. This is not new. He's been doing this for decades. A lot of people are surprised when we tell them that Bill Gates' father, for many, many years, ran Planned Parenthood. And when he would come home from work, he would sit at the table with his with his wife and with little Bill and little Bill's sister, and he would tell them fascinating stories about all the babies that they killed that day. And uh, when Bill Gates sat around the dinner table having dinner, uh, talking about all the hundreds and thousands of abortions, not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds and thousands of abortions that were done that day as they sat around the dinner table, Bill Gates was inspired to become what is called a eugenicist. And a eugenicist, his dad is a eugenicist, was before he passed away, and uh, Bill Gates Sr. ran Planned Parenthood. And in 2010, Bill Gates Jr., following in his father's footsteps, he created a group called the Global Vaccine Action Plan. And in 2010, their mission statement was to vaccinate every single person on the face of the earth, which is a ridiculous statement because every single person on the face of the earth doesn't need to be vaccinated. Um, but they've solved that problem in 2020. They've released COVID. COVID is a real virus and it really kills people. But uh, um, was COVID made in a laboratory or is it found in nature? But in 2010, Bill Gates appointed a man by the name of Anthony Fauci to sit in a leadership position in this group called the Global Vaccine Action Plan. So what you're seeing taking place now in 2020 is the result of decades and decades of work by Bill Gates Sr., by Bill Gates Jr., and all these things have been put into place for quite some time. Now, back on July 4th, here's another prediction that we made. Back on July 4th, we said this, common sense tells you that if they make you wear a mask, they will make you take the vaccine, and they will make you take a digital passport. That's what we told you back in, 29, uh, back in July 4th of 2020. We told you that mandatory masks were coming, and they're going to start on January 21st, and they're going to last for 100 days. Okay? Uh, we told you that mandatory vaccines were coming, and what they decided to do is they decided to do it the tricky way. They're not going to make the vaccine itself mandatory. Why? Because that would violate the constitutions of just about every major nation on the face of the earth. So what they're going to do is they're going to, they're, 
They're going to make it mandatory without making it mandatory. Qantas Airlines, they've decided, and every major airline is now following suit. Qantas Airlines has decided that if you want to fly on their airline uh, internationally, you have to receive the vaccine. And um, a number of other airlines have decided to follow suit with that. So Qantas Airlines from Australia, the very first airline to require that you have a vaccine. Now, common sense would dictate that if you get a vaccine, and I don't advise that you do, but uh, speaking hypothetically, if you were to get a vaccine and then you said, okay, I have the vaccine, Now I can go to Qantas Airlines and I can take my international flight. Well, when you get to the airline ticket counter and you stand there and say, hey, I've been vaccinated, please allow me to fly on your airplane. What do you think they're going to say? Do you think that they're just going to trust you when you say that you got vaccinated? No, they're going to demand proof that you've been vaccinated vaccinated. So we told you back in July, we said that mandatory masks were coming. We told you that a mandatory vaccine is coming. And we told you that mandatory immunity passports were coming as well. All those things are coming to pass right now. So Uh, We were right about every one of those things that we said. And again, it doesn't take all that much presence of mind. You just have to look at what you're seeing and you have to know what the Bible says about the end times. The Bible says that all the world wonders after the beast and Revelation 13 says who is like unto the beast and who can make war with the beast When the Antichrist shows up, he shows up to a world that has already created his one world system. That's what the Antichrist is going to inherit. He's not going to create a lot of these things from whole cloth. When the Antichrist shows up, he's going to inherit a system that has been created for him to receive. And everywhere that we look, we are seeing deception on an absolutely mind numbing scale. Take a listen to this Anthony Fauci telling an eight year old girl that he vaccinated Santa Claus. Talk about mind games. Here's Anthony Fauci telling an eight year old girl that Santa Claus has been vaccinated so he can be allowed to deliver toys around the world. Shocking. How did Santa get the vaccine? And is it safe for him to go in the house? Well, how can Santa Claus safely give out presents with COVID-19 spreading everywhere? How can he do it? Will Santa still be able to visit me in coronavirus this season? What if he can't go to anyone's house or near his reindeer? Well, I have to say I took care of that for you because I was worried that you'd all be upset. So what I did a little while ago, I took a trip up there to the North Pole. I went there and I vaccinated Santa Claus myself. I measured his level of immunity and he is good to go. He can come down the chimney. He can leave the presents. He can leave, and you have nothing to worry about. Santa Claus is good to go. I wonder what that means, that Anthony Fauci measured the level of immunity in Santa Claus. And the idea that he is boldly and brazenly telling that to an eight-year-old girl. And of course, he's doing it on television. So that's going out to kids around the country and around the world. Um, This is deception on an unbelievably large scale. Now, 
I played this clip for you about a month ago, and I want to remind you of it. Tonight is kind of a review program. I want you to listen to the testimony of a man called David E. Martin, and he's talking about the CDC patent on the coronavirus. Take a listen to David E. Martin talking about the CDC patent on the coronavirus. I'm the developer of Linguistic Genomics, which was the first platform on which you could determine the intent of communication rather than the literal artifact of communication. But we've also used that technology for a number of other applications in defense and intelligence and finance. And most notably, in the early 2000s, my company was responsible for bringing down what was at the time one of the largest tax frauds in U.S. history. We maintained a series of inquiries into every individual, every organization, and every company that is involved in anything that either blurs the line of biological and chemical weapons or crosses that line in any of 168 countries. In 1999, there were a million patents digitized by IBM. And those million patents were the first time human innovation had been put into an electronic digital searchable format. We took that information and we did a very simple exercise using our linguistic genomics technology. I made the horrific assessment that approximately one third of all patents filed in the United States were functional forgeries, meaning that while they had linguistic variations, they actually covered the same subject matter. In 1999, patents on coronavirus started showing up. And thus began the rabbit trail. March 2003, panic grips Hong Kong as a deadly new virus sweeps through the city. In 2003, the Center for Disease Control saw the possibility of a gold strike. And that was the coronavirus outbreak that happened in Asia. They saw that a virus they knew could be easily manipulated was something that was very valuable. And in 2003, they sought to patent it. And they made sure that they controlled the proprietary rights to the disease, to the virus, and to its detection, and all of the measurement of it. We know that Anthony Fauci, that Ralph Barrick, that the Center for Disease Control, and the laundry list of people who wanted to take credit for inventing coronavirus, were at the hub of this story. From 2003 to 2018, they controlled 100% of the cash flow that built the empire around the industrial complex of coronavirus. The World Health Organization has officially named the, the new novel coronavirus. The novel coronavirus outbreak. The coronavirus is a pandemic. An international a public health pandemic. emergency. Well, we know that the coronavirus manipulation started with Dr. Ralph Barrick in 1999. The major characteristics of SARS, MERS, and SARS coronavirus, too, it's a good way for you... Ralph Barrick is the researcher at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, who's famous for his chimeric coronavirus research. In 2002, there was a recognition that the coronavirus was seen as an exploitable mechanism for both good and ill. On April the 25th, 2003, the U.S. Center for Disease Control filed a patent on the coronavirus transmitted to humans. Under 35 U.S. Code Section 101, nature is prohibited from being patented. Either SARS coronavirus was manufactured, therefore making a patent on it legal, or it was natural therefore making a patent on it illegal. If it was manufactured, it was a violation of biological and chemical weapons, treaties and laws. If it was natural, filing a patent on it was illegal. In either outcome, both are illegal. In the spring of 2007, the CDC filed a petition with the Patent Office to keep their application confidential and private. They actually filed patents on not only the virus, but they also filed patents on its detection and a kit to measure it. Because of that CDC patent, they had the ability to control 
who is authorized and who is not authorized to make independent inquiries into coronavirus. You cannot look at the virus, you cannot measure it, you cannot develop a test kit for it. And by ultimately receiving the patents that constrained anyone from using it, they had the means, they had the motive, and most of all, they had the monetary gain from turning coronavirus from a pathogen to profit. Developing and owning a coronavirus vaccine has become a biotech arms race with political overtones. This vaccine gold rush is starting to bother me. Gold rush. Hmm. Let's keep that in mind. And so somewhere between 2012 and 2013, something happened. The federal funding for research that was feeding into places like Harvard, Emory, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. That funding suddenly became impaired by something that happened at the NIH, where the NIH got this little tiny moment of clarity and said, I think something we're doing is wrong. And in 2013, the NIH said, gain of function research on coronavirus should be suspended. The National Institutes of Health had a moral and social and potentially legal reason to object to research. But the letters that were sent to the researchers essentially said, you are receiving notice that we're telling you to stop. And now on the bottom of the page, we're gonna clarify what stop means. Keep going. But when the heat gets hot in 2014 and 15, what do you do? you offshore the research. You fund the Wuhan Institute of Virology to do the stuff that sounds like it's getting a little edgy with respect to its morality and legality. But do you do it straightway? No. You run the money through a series of cover organizations to make it look like you're funding a U.S. operation, which then subcontracts with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The U.S. could say China did it. China could say the U.S. did it. And the cool thing is, both of them are almost telling the truth. So there you have a man by the name of David E. Martin, and he just told you all the information that you need to know about the CDC patent on the coronavirus. Now, let's talk about our friend Anthony Fauci. Uh, here's a cover story tonight. The UK Daily Mail, Vaccine Chaos Deepens. Dr. Fauci says spreading out more first doses of the vaccine by using second doses held in reserve is under consideration. Dr. Fauci is sounding the alarm and he wants to know that everybody needs to put on a mask and take a vaccine and, and have a digital ID. But that's not what Dr. Fauci said back in March, April, and May of 2020. Take a listen to Anthony Fauci, the man that the liberal fake news media refers to now as America's doctor. If Anthony Fauci is your doctor, you're in trouble. Um, take a listen to what America's doctor had to say about mask wearing back when COVID started. Right now in the United States, People should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it? Because people are listening really no, closely to this. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better. And it might even block a, a droplet. But it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. And often, there are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face. And can you get some schmutz sort of staying uh, uh, inside uh, uh, there? Of course, and... of course. But when you think masks, you should think of health care providers needing them and people who are ill. So isn't that fascinating? The man that the fake news media has branded as America's doctor, a number of people in the chat room said, hey, I thought Bill Gates <laughs> was America's doctor. Um, Anthony Fauci is on record at the beginning of the COVID crisis by mockingly saying how much that you do not need to be wearing a mask. Now, 
Isn't it amazing how the tables have turned to the complete opposite direction and that guy that we told you about, Kurt Eichenwald, wants to murder people who refuse to wear a mask. Do you see how the liberals who are behind all of this and the New World Order and the Great Reset and the Fourth Industrial Revolution... Do you see how they lie and they twist and they turn? And what they're hoping is that you're not going to be, you know, that you're not paying attention to what they say. You're not going to remember what they said six months ago or six years ago or even six days ago. And that's why they flood you with this constant update of news. One of the reasons why they do that is they want you to forget Things that they said previously. And when you follow these trends and patterns, what do you find? You find that they lie and they lie and they lie on an absolute regular basis. So there you have Anthony Fauci saying, nope, you should not be wearing a mask. Nobody should be wearing a mask. Uh, Everybody should be walking around free. And he's changed his tune. And they've all changed their tune. But in reality, they haven't changed their tunes because this was the plan from the very beginning. What's happening now has been predictively programmed for, I would say, about 50 years. Um, Take a listen to this clip. 1981, an episode of Barney Miller talking about a conspiracy theory nutcase and something called the Trilateral Commission back in 1981. And you'll see how long that they have been predictively programming what's happening right now in 2020. They're the ones who should be arresting, not me. Why didn't you say that before? What we got here? Yeah, Mrs. William Klein. He was wrecking an office. But I, I just wanted to meet them face to face. I wanted them to admit what they were doing. Who is they? He was in the office of the Trilateral Commission. Trilateral Commission? Yeah, the Trilateral Commission. (laughs) All right, what is the Trilateral Commission? (laughs) It's an organization founded in 1973 by David Rockefeller to bring together business and political leaders from the United States, Europe, Japan, so they could work together for... uh, better economic and political cooperation between their nations. And with that, that's what they'd like us to believe. But you see, what they're really up to is a scheme to plant their own loyal members in positions of power in this country, to work to erase national boundaries and create an international community, and in time, bring about a one-world government with David Rockefeller calling the shots. <laughs> I take it they're pressing charges? Yeah, well, uh, uh, he broke a globe and uh, and some UNICEF artwork. Well, they're they're in on it, too. (laughs) Okay, Mr. Klein, if you're just... I'm telling you, our whole way of life as we know it is in jeopardy. I appreciate that information. But I have have the documented evidence. It's all in there. Show him. Well, he's got uh, got these magazines here. Conspiracy Review. Suppressed Truth Roundup. The whole master plan is exposed. Yeah, well, um... You're still not convinced, huh? <laughs> would, would you like to hear the names of just a few of the people who have been on the Trilateral Commission? Uh, not particularly. James Earl Carter. Heard of him? Look, Mr. Klein... Henry Kissinger. You heard of him? Walter Mondale. Who? <laughs> Mr. Klein, this is... John all... Anderson. George Bush. Now, you remember at the, at the convention, everybody thought it was going to be Ford for Veep. You know what happened? David Rockefeller just picked up a phone, put in a call. Hey, Ronnie, forget Jerry, it's George. Bye. <laughs> so, no matter who won in November, they had their man in the White House. Are you through? So there you have a 1981 episode of Barney Miller talking about the Trilateral Commission. And back in 1981, the average person had no idea about groups like the Trilateral Commission, the CFR, and all these other semi-secret societies and groups and the Bilderberger Group. Nobody, nobody knew what was happening. So what do they do? 
they sneak it into episodes like this in a comedy show, and you heard that he mentioned the names of David Rockefeller and George Bush repeatedly. Well, just about 10 years after that program in 1981 on the Barney Miller Show aired, George Bush, who is now president, he was not president in 1981, but now in 1991, George Bush stands in front of the United States Congress and he says this. This is an historic moment. We have in this past year made great progress in ending the long era of conflict and Cold War. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Well, isn't that interesting? There's George Herbert Walker Bush, the same person who in 1963 was in Dallas, Texas, working for the CIA. And in 1963, George H.W. Bush Uh, was on the ground the day that John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And George H.W. Bush was one of the people who helped to plan out this very complex assassination of a sitting U.S. president. That's 1963. 1981, the Barney Miller Show has a conspiracy theory nut providing comedy, talking about David Rockefeller and George Bush creating a one-world government. And then 10 years later, George H.W. Bush stands up in front of Congress and declares that the new world order is on the rise and that it is coming and that it cannot be stopped. Now, Uh, These are all the conditions under which when Donald Trump became president, uh, these are the forces that he had a battle against. And God absolutely set Donald Trump up to be president of the United States. And when you get to the uh, second chapter of the book of Daniel, Daniel says this, about people who become rulers over a nation. Daniel 2, verses 20 and 21. This is kind of interesting. If you were here a couple of weeks ago for our Bible study on all the Bible verses that are 2021. But in Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 and 21, we read this. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons, and he removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge to them that know understanding. God is in control. Somebody commented about an hour ago, talking about, uh, you know, I guess that they were new to this program. And they said, boy, you guys sure have a lot of gloom and doom. And my answer to that is, no, we don't. We don't have a lot of gloom and doom. Well, we are called Now the End Begins, so uh, we are certainly not light and fluffy. But we really don't look at things from a gloom and doom perspective. And let me tell you why. The reason why it's not all gloom and doom, even though that the things that are happening are kind of gloomy and doomy, is because we are Bible believers. And I don't know about you, but I have been waiting for 30 years for these things to begin to come to pass. And I'm excited. Aren't you just a little bit excited? I'm not talking 
being excited about people going through food lines and people dying of COVID. I'm not talking about that. None of those things are exciting. But what I'm talking about is all these things that are taking place have been prophesied in the Bible. The New World Order, the One World Government, how do you think that you get to a One World Government? Do you think everybody just goes peacefully? You just wake up one morning and there's a One World Government? You just wake up and you have a cup of coffee and you look out the window and it's the New World Order? It doesn't work that way. The way that it works is exactly what we're seeing right now. And I find that exciting. Not the things that are happening, because there's a lot of terrible things happening. But the exciting part is, if you're a Bible believer, if you have a King James Bible, and if you don't, and you can't afford one, we're going to send you one for free. Send me an email to info, I-N-F-O, at nowtheendbegins.com. And tell me that you would like a free King James Ruckman study Bible. And we'll send you one for free. No strings attached. Uh, You don't even have to pay for the shipping. And we will send it to you in any country that the United States Post Office ships to. Uh, Just send us an email to info at nowtheendbegins.com and we will send you one out. The next shipment is going out on Saturday. Today is Thursday night. The next shipment, if you've been waiting for one, our next scheduled shipment is going to be Saturday afternoon. But look, the Bible has said for 2,000 years that one day these things are going to begin to take place. Turn to Revelation chapter 5. And I want to show you the Apostle John, Revelation chapter 5. I want to show you the Apostle John up in heaven. And he's waiting for Daniel's seven-sealed book to be opened. And nobody can open it. And look at the reaction that the Apostle John has while he's waiting for this book to be opened. Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. The Apostle John is weeping because he has this end times book of prophecy. If you remember back in Daniel chapter 12, when the angel Gabriel gave all these incredible end times revelations to the prophet Daniel, What did he tell Daniel to do? Daniel 12, 4, But thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So, in Revelation chapter 5, it's after the rapture, John is up in heaven, and he sees that book from Daniel 12, 4, And John wants that book opened very, very, very badly. Why? Because it's God's book. And when no man is found worthy to open that book, and it's a book that when it's opened, talks about terrible, terrible, horrifically bad things. It talks about the Great Tribulation. But John wants that book opened so badly because it's God's book. And he's weeping because no one was found worthy to open the book and then look at Revelation 5, 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, 
the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Wouldn't it be great if you and I could weep over Bible prophecy the way the Apostle John up in heaven after the rapture wept over Daniel's seven-sealed closed book? And again, John wasn't looking forward to the terrible things. John wasn't excited about all the doom and gloom of the Great Tribulation. But John was weeping for that book to be opened because it contained the prophetical words of Jesus Christ. And as Bible believers, we need to be excited about the negative prophecy as much about as the positive prophecy. Why? Because it is all prophetic words from Jesus Christ. And we need as a people, as the remnant church, we need to get excited about Bible prophecy. We are living in a time where it is coming to pass before our very eyes. The Bible says this, that we are to give the Lord no rest. Give the Lord no rest until he makes Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. Isn't that interesting? The Bible says that we are to give the Lord no rest until he makes Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. That's Isaiah 62, 7. And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Now, I, in just a moment, we are going to pray. And as the rest of this world is welcoming in 2021, a year that we've already told you, is going to be a year filled with Bible prophecy. It's going to be a time of uh, the new world order. It's going to be a time where where um, people will be pulled out of their homes and out of their cars for not wearing masks, for not being vaccinated. We are about to go into the beginnings of a police state. And 2020, if you thought 2020 was bad, 2021 is going to be even worse. But as Bible believers, I want you to covenant with me. At the start of this show, I told you how last year on New Year's Eve, my New Year's Eve article, and I wrote about how God got a hold of me and he wanted me to commit to doing Now the End Begins full time. And it was one of the best decisions that I ever made in my life. And I'm so happy that I did it. And it was a struggle and it was hard to do. But man, oh man, I am so glad that I trusted the Lord and just laid everything on the altar to serve him in 2020. Now in 2021, I want to go deeper than that. Uh, last year on New Year's Eve, we were not doing a podcast. We didn't even have a podcast last year. We had the Bible study, but the podcast came out of this crazy year of 2020. And God just put on my heart to have a twice a week podcast. And so that's what we started to do. So in just a minute, we're going to pray. And as the rest of the world is welcoming in 2020 with balloons and ribbons and noisemakers and alcohol and wine and beer and whiskey and all sorts of worldly stuff, at the stroke of midnight Eastern Standard Time, I want us to be in prayer and asking that God is going to give us a renewed strength. And God's going to give us a renewed vision for 2021. And that you and I are going to remain in our places on the front lines of the end times. And we are going to 
um, uh, the Bible says to give the Lord no rest until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise in all the earth. That can't happen until the second coming. And the second coming can't happen until the great tribulation. The great tribulation can't happen until um, uh, uh, the start of the time of Jacob's trouble. And the start of the time of Jacob's trouble cannot happen until the pre-tribulation rapture takes place. So when the Bible says in Isaiah 62, 7, and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in all the earth, that chain of events has to start with the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Now, I want to give a special invitation. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you're listening to this program right now, if you're in the chat room right now, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to just post a little message and ask us to pray for you. And we're going to pray for you right now. Um, but if you're listening, if you're in the chat room or you're not in the chat room, but you're home or wherever you are and you're listening to this program, if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your savior, we are inviting you to trust him. The Bible says, um, uh, but as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God. Uh, in Acts chapter 16, the Philippian jailer sees all the hubbub going on in the jail, and he comes in and he says to Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to get saved? And Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Uh, almost 30 years ago, I opened up a King James Bible from the Gideon Bible and Tract Society, and I got on my knees and I asked Jesus Christ to save me. I'm going to post my personal testimony in the chat room, um, but you can go to nowtheendbegins.com and just go to the about section and you'll see where my personal testimony is. Um, almost 30 years ago, I got on my knees and I asked Jesus Christ to save me. If you're not saved right now, you need to get saved. And uh, you need to reach out and ask us to pray for you. But we're going to pray for you anyway. Um, and, and the time for putting off that decision is past. If you're not saved, you need to get saved right here, right now, tonight. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And somebody is saying that there is somebody in the chat room. Um, Chris says, I am a backslider and I want to be forgiven again. Chris, if you've never gotten saved, you need to get saved. But if you are saved... If you have a testimony of salvation and you have backslidden, I want you to listen to this verse. 1 John 1, nine says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if, you, if you're a backslider, Chris, 1 John 1, nine in the King James Bible I want you to meditate on that and to ask Jesus Christ to wash you clean again and to get back in the track and to serve our Lord. 1 John 1, 9. Now, it's almost midnight, and I would like every single person, all the, the hundreds of people in the chat room and the thousands of people listening to this program, I want to go before the Lord right now. It's almost midnight, Eastern Standard Time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. The clock has just turned midnight. It is now 2021. 
and we're in a brand new decade. We're in a brand new time. And we pray, Father God, as as the remnant church, as your church family, as your adopted children, Lord, get us in the game. We want to do something for you that will last for all eternity. We want to do something for you, Jesus, that will give us crowns at the judgment seat of Christ. We want more than anything to be useful to you in your service. And your word says to go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house might be full. And Lord, we're a needy people tonight. It's a brand new year. It's a brand new day. And there are ominous signs on the horizon. And there's trouble everywhere that we look. And we know that the new world order is rising. We know that the spirit of Antichrist is on the earth right now. But we know, Lord, that you have overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. And we're looking out for Satan, but we're looking up for you. Your word says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And your word says, Wherefore? Comfort one another with these words. Father God, it's a privilege that you allow us here in the NTEB family, uh, that here all across America and all around the world, in Argentina, New Zealand, Australia, Europe, Israel, Egypt, Canada, Malaysia, um, everywhere, Lord, uh, you have given, now the end begins, a foothold and an outpost And we thank you for that, and we praise you for that. And uh, we ask you, Lord, to use us in a mighty way. Uh, Father, we want to be used of you. If nobody wants you, Lord, we want you. If nobody wants your King James Bible, we want your King James Bible. And we come before you, God, as a church family. Your word says, neglect not the assembling together of yourselves uh, uh, as the manner of some is and so much more as you see the day approaching. And Lord, we've assembled yet again for two hours tonight, and we thank you and we praise you for your goodness. And uh, Lord, be with us, be with our family members who are struggling with COVID, be with Juanita with her high blood pressure, and and, uh, show her, Lord, about beet juice and, and, and how that can, anybody who is struggling with high blood pressure and what beet juice can can uh, do and you created that father god and we just lift up everybody in our global family who needs a touch from you today whether it be health or finances or relationships and uh, we ask you to work and move god as only you can and we're just so grateful for this time that you give us and we commit all these things to you lord in jesus name amen Well, at the stroke of midnight, we published our very first article of the year, and I'm putting that in the chat room right now. You guys are the very first people to see this, Um, and uh, uh, it is just my hope and my prayers. I've shared a lot of that with you tonight. It is my hope and my prayers for the coming year, and uh, I'm so grateful that God has given us this beautiful studio that we do these programs from. And uh, uh, I thank you all for being here for this program. And uh, please, if you need a King James Bible and you can't afford one, I want you to email me, info at nowtheendbegins.com, and we're going to send you one out completely for free if you can't afford one. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our mailing list, there's still about 300 people in the chat room If you haven't subscribed to our mailing list, we need you to sign up right here and right now. 
It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, we don't sell your email address, but we do send you updates and articles. We keep you in the loop. We have almost 17,000 people who have signed up, and uh, we need you. If you haven't signed up, I just put the link in the chat room. But if you're not in the chat room, you can go to NowTheEndBegins.com, and the subscribe box is on every single page. Thank you so much for tuning into this program. I am thrilled, absolutely thrilled, that we got to spend New Year's Eve, and we've never done this before. This is the very first program, and I hope the rapture happens in the springtime so that this is the first program and the last program. But Lord willing, if we're here next New Year's Eve, we'll do this again. There's, there's not going to be a podcast tomorrow. Take the day off. Spend the time with your friends and family, uh, fill your pockets with gospel tracts, and go hand them out, and go tell a lost and dying world about new life in Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning into this program. I'm so happy that we got to share this time together, Uh, and let's keep looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy New Year, everybody. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me I can only imagine surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will I dance for you Jesus or in all of you be still will I stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall will I sing hallelujah will I be able to speak at all I can only imagine I can only imagine day comes and I find myself standing in the sun I can only imagine when all I would do is forever forever worship you I can only imagine yeah I can only imagine To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak at all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine.
then all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine 